Have you ever thought, what happens if you take 700 people and put them into a confined space with the promise of unlimited food, unlimited drinks, and just seeing cool shit around the world? Like, that sounds awesome, right? But here's the kicker, okay? It's for nine, nine months. months. That, my fellow mochis, is called the Ultimate World Cruise from Royal Caribbean. Look, if Zack and Cody could do it for three years, you could do it for nine months. I know there's been some drama going on about this cruise, and since influencers have been basically recording their lives every day on board the ship, it's basically one big reality show. Like, there's accusations of classism to actual, literal flooding. Is this drama all real? I'll talk about that later, because to understand the drama, you need to understand this cruise. If you enjoy comedy commentaries, be sure to hit subscribe, and let's go. You may be asking yourself, just what is included in the biggest global social experiment since, like, Squid Game to Challenge? Well, all aboard, ye landlubbers, too. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Well, okay, 274 nights, 11 world wonders, and that's in addition to you, my pookie. And 60 plus countries. In other words, you'll be making more stops than the FedEx guy on Black Friday. Now, how much is all this? For just $60,000 per person, you too can stay in the cheapest room available with such luxury amenities as a bed, a TV, a shower, a toilet, and that's really about it. There's no hotel view, so you're essentially in a hotel room version of Harry Potter's cupboard for the next nine months. But wait, there's more. If you act now, you can upgrade to a window for the low, low price of $65,000. And the price just goes up from there. And the thing is, since these passengers are going to be there for months, they're going to get to know everyone. I wonder if it's going to be like the Titanic, where those in the expensive suites will just look down on those poor souls that are only paying $60,000 for their trip. For their cupboard. Man, that's gotta be so f***ed up. Like, can you imagine if an accident happens? All those broke suckers like me who only have $60,000 to spare? Yeah, we're going down with the boat. Okay, but what does this ship include? The Serenade of the Seas is one of Royal Caribbean's smaller, older ships, so don't expect those huge amenities like a floating city, like the Icon of the Seas. Oh, look at this famous pool deck. It's a beautiful lounge with a retractable roof. That place looks perfect for a night swim. Oh god, not night swim. There's also your gym, as well as mini golf, and a 40 foot rock climbing wall? Out on those winds? In the sea? Man, you better be sticky like Spider-Man. Connected to my walls like the Spider-Man. Damn it, Cupcake. They also have a casino if you feel like getting rid of even more money. And there's also stage shows, so if you like Elton John and Beatles tributes, this is for you. They have game nights and just tons of bars and restaurants. Oh, and probably some guest entertainers, but they don't say anything on there, so it could be BTS or New Jeans or something. Or their tribute band version. Can you imagine if you go on board and instead of New Jeans, it's their tribute cover band, Old Pants? <laughs> I'm hilarious. All right, now let's see what your trip actually comes with. The first perk is round trip business class airfare between your home location and Miami, Florida. So round trip business class airfare between your home city and Miami. Okay, that's actually a decent perk, okay? Considering how expensive airfare is to get from Canada to the US. Actually, let me check right now just how much that would cost. Okay, that actually could be a good perk. Once we are on board, all passengers have the deluxe beverage package for the entire voyage. The deluxe drink package for the entire voyage? Okay, that's where it starts getting a little dangerous, okay? Because this is basically unlimited alcohol. Like, I've been on cruises before where most people don't have the deluxe drink package, and they're already acting like your drunk uncle at your sister's wedding. Now imagine that amplified by, like, 700 people. Like, people are gonna get f***ing wasted. But apparently Winegate already happened. They've been running out of a bunch of wine and there's even trouble with restocking. Thankfully, crisis averted as this couple happily explains about two days later. World Cruise Wine Yama. Day two, crisis averted. The update. <laughs> so they've added two new wines you can see here. And we wanted to let you know we're somehow, somehow surviving the lack of wine. The passengers are happy again. <laughs> So Winegate may have been solved quick, but there's some other drama that I'll explain to you later on in this video. Just to clarify, you don't have to go for all nine months, okay? You can take the trip segment by segment, so not everyone on there is trapped for that long. And I guess that's perfect for anyone who has a job and still wants to do this trip. Oh wait, if you can afford to go on this trip, you are probably so well off that you don't actually need a job. 
or are retired, or have an army of unpaid Oompa Loompas doing your work like some sort of unethical Willy Wonka. Right now, it seems fine and all, so where's the nightmare? The drama's about to come, okay, so stay with me. There is a lot that can go wrong besides not having enough wine. You know how sometimes if you're around your partner or your family for too long, you drive each other nuts? Like you just need a little bit of alone space? Now imagine doing that in this glorified shoebox. So apparently people have already been hearing shouting and screaming down the halls. So well, let the drama begin. Also, these couples probably can't even relieve stress properly and with privacy because, I mean, just take a look at what the security guard has been confiscating. You'll see what I mean. Those irons. <laughs> That's the best! <laughs> Okay, what's the funniest thing you've had to confiscate? A uh, whip. Huh? A whip. A uh, whip. <laughs> and to make it worse, there was a flooding incident, so it is now literally the Titanic. But hey, at least there's no annoying kids running around to ruin your vacation, right? Right? No, because damn it, there's a kids menu. And there are about 20 kids running on board, so you can't even spend your 60k in peace. And do these kids even go to school? I mean, I guess they could be homeschooled, but apparently they set aside homework time. So now I'm wondering, what do they learn in cruise ship school? Like, maritime law? Sea shanties? Yo ho, yo ho! To make things even more interesting, there are many TikTokers on board. As a fellow TikTok influencer myself, <coughs> link in bio, I can't help but see how this would not be annoying as f now imagine you're just chilling at the Windjammer Cafe, trying to eat your breakfast when some TikToker just comes up to you and does their stupid dance trend, and you have to put up with that for 9 months. Among these TikTokers are some of our main characters of the cruise, Dr. Jenny Travels, Brooklyn Schwetcher, and her sister Madison. If you want to see daily life on this ship, I actually really recommend you go follow them. Thankfully, they don't seem to be the type of TikToker to be screaming at the top of their lungs in the middle of dinner or just hitting the nene on every corner of the ship, so... That's cool. Funny enough, their equator crossing ceremony was literally putting some of the biggest TikTokers on the ship on trial. Like, they were being roasted by the whole ship. And how did they get punished? Well, they get sent back to 2014 to do the ice bucket challenge. Like, I'm actually kind of jealous. Those were simpler times. So recently, the ship just bypassed the Drake Passage, which is obviously named after the Six God himself, Drizzy Drake. The thing about the Drake Passage is that it's about as stormy as Thor's farts. So when the ship was just passing through, they had to put in uh, throw-up bags everywhere in case people threw up. Like they really were preparing for the worst. So when it actually happened, it seemed like it went okay. The captain was also awesome enough to come down and host an AMA for everyone. And we attended a meeting from Captain. Listen in. Good morning. Feeling okay? Woo! Oh. <laughs> Wait, if you're the captain, then... Who's driving the ship? And the tea is still boiling hot, folks, so get your cups ready. Remember those main character TikTokers that I mentioned earlier? Well, I guess there isn't enough drama because now we have a new DLC character on board. Meet Mark Sebastian. Most of the TikTokers are just normal travel vloggers or your run-of-the-mill influencers. But Mark is a drama TikToker who has come on board to spill all of the tea, and it is steaming. Well, uh, yesterday... I boarded the famed nine-month cruise, the Serenade of the Seas, uh, and I have some thoughts. Uh, number one, it is so fucking loud on this goddamn ship. It's so overstimulating, non-stop music being pumped into every room. Next, unfortunately, I will be pressing charges against the Royal Caribbean Channel for showing me nicer ships I could be staying on. And funny enough, Royal Caribbean apparently saw his complaints and they actually sent somebody to get him the hangers that he wanted. Next, I will be pressing charges against whatever smartass at Royal Caribbean decided to see my video about the wire hangers and send plastic hangers to my door. Sorry, I was told to give you this. Did you request... If that was like a way to win me over, you should have also sent water bottles, but if that was a sly way of telling me that you're watching. If you want an unfiltered, uncensored, and just full out unhinged commentary of what it's like being on a nine month cruise, you should definitely check him out. Now, does he grasp at straws a little to find some overwhelmingly negative things? 
Maybe, but it does offer a fresh and unsanitized perspective. Also, a TikToker called UK Seeker Travels has recently posted a video alleging classism aboard the ship. What did I say? I I told you they're going to eat the poor. Oh my god, it's tea time on the cruise. The pinnacle members on the ultimate world cruise are being treated very different. The pinnacle members have been treated completely different. Um, they have been invited to meetings and town halls, which other guests haven't been invited to. Um, they're getting really pissed off. Royal Caribbean and how they are treating these sort of platinum members a lot better. Pinnacle members are allegedly having secret town hall meetings and got to see things others didn't and treating full cruisers better than these segmenters. But okay, it's actually pretty standard in a lot of industries, especially the cruise one, that the higher tier members will get special services. It's like being in economy on a flight and expecting to access the first class lounge or getting first class food and showers. And just like many other industries, cruise lines have loyalty points, okay? So the more you cruise or the more higher the level you are, so that's based on how often you cruise or how many points you have. It's like unlocking the Pinnacle member DLC. Aw man, it's not fair that the higher tier members get special things and I don't. Well, honey, you should have bought the season's pass. So this drama is false. Honestly, when you add in everything, it's not that bad. Like, I know that sounds crazy. It's still way too expensive. But if we take, say, a nine-month stay at a, I don't know, Margaritaville resort, at an average of $211 per night, you're looking at $59,458 for nine months. And that doesn't even include the unlimited food and alcohol. And despite all the drama surrounding this cruise, I've got to say, huge props to the Royal Caribbean staff, because every time I cruise, the staff and crew are just the kindest, loveliest people. And I'm sure they're putting up with all the main characters and all the Karens while patching up any drama as quickly as they can so big shout out i can't even imagine having to put up with that anyways long cruises aren't anything new plenty of people do nine month cruises all the time it's called naval deployment also side note i just found out there is a tiktoker called whimsy soul or kara the bingo girl and she invented a ultimate world cruise bingo and you know what? i'm gonna check back on that in a few months and see if anything checks i personally don't think that i can do a trip like this maybe i could do two weeks a month max but nine months? At that price, I'd rather be able to pick and fly anywhere I want at my own schedule. Or, I don't know, maybe go see BTS 15 times. But hey, if you have the money to spare and you want to set sail in a future Netflix reality show, then you do you, mochis. I'll likely check in with an update on this cruise in a few months from now, just to see what has happened since. Like what sort of drama has developed, or if anyone decided to become the villain of the season. And let's face it, there's probably only one season of this show. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. And well, I will see you mochis later. Bye-bye.